So you want to make your own rings and jewelry, 3D printed and maybe even metal, but you don't know where to start. I'll show you the way. G'day and welcome to a new series where we're going to design and manufacture some rings and jewelry. This series will take you through 3D modeling, 3D printing, and even investment casting, so you can have your designs realized in actual metal. The only prerequisite is watching my beginner CAD videos on Unshape, so you can follow what happens in these ones. Let's get started. We're gonna make two rings side by side, and to aid with that, the first thing we're gonna do is set up a construction line. So let's start a new sketch on the front plane, spin the camera around, and then simply draw a line in construction mode. That sketch is finished. I'm going to press P to hide the planes and I'm going to rename this one Axis. There's two different ways I'm going to show you to make rings. The first method is extruding from the side. Let's set that up. We're going to start a sketch, press P to show the planes and I'm going to draw on the right hand side. It's very important that you do it perpendicular to the axis you just drew. Now I can spin around the camera and the first thing we're going to do is in the very center, we're going to draw a circle that represents our finger measurement. So I measured in at a size V, which means I'm going to put in 20.5. So this circle represents the inner hole where our finger goes. We want to do the exterior of the ring now. We're going to come up to the circle tool and come down to ellipse. The first click is going to be centered and just above the center point of the first circle going to be centered and just above the center point of the first circle. We're then going to come up above the ring and then come out wider and click a third time. We're going to do a little bit of groundwork to make our job easier later on. We're going to come to the line tool, make sure it's set to construction and then from the center base come up to the bottom of the band and then the next click at the top of the main hole and then the last click at the very top in the center. This will allow us to now use the dimension tool to set exactly how thick we want the various components. So I'm going to go with something like four at the top, two at the bottom, and an overall width of 24. You can come back and easily change any of these numbers to alter the proportion. This sketch for now at least is finished and we can hit the tick. I'm going to rename it extruded ring. Making the ring 3D is really straightforward. We're going to come up to extrude, click in the middle of our geometry, but not the center hole, and then put in the thickness that we want. I would suggest that a good maximum is something like eight millimeters. Otherwise, if it's too thick, your finger won't be able to bend because the ring will get caught. I'm also going to rename my part extruded ring. So this first method was the extrude method where we draw the ring from side on and then we thicken it. The next method is called the revolve method. For this, we're gonna start a sketch on the front plane. We're gonna spin the camera around and we should see the first line that we drew coming across us. Next thing we're gonna do is draw a rectangle, but not the type of rectangles we've done before. We're gonna hit the drop down and come to the center point rectangle. Somewhere on the axis, we're gonna draw a box. This box, we're gonna dimension the vertical height to whatever cutout we want our finger to be. So mine is 20.5. The horizontal is going to be our maximum thickness, which we've set at 8. If we spin the camera, we can see that this lines up perfectly with the whole of the extruded ring. To make our revolved geometry, we only need to draw half the ring up the top here. Might be a good idea to watch what I draw and how it translates to 3D geometry before you draw your own. I'm going to use the three point arc tool to do the edges. I'm going to draw one more construction line down the middle, just as a point of symmetry. I can then use the mirror tool to ensure that the left and right hand sides are the same. Onshape is prompting us to select a mirror line, so we click on this dotted line and then anything we want to be mirrored goes to the other side. I'm going to finish this off with a little arc. Some tangent constraints will ensure that everything is going smoothly. You'll note if we drag points on one side that the other point changes too. 
That's because of the symmetric constraint that's automatically been applied when we use our mirror. We can zoom out, you can see I've only drawn partial ring, but that's all we need at this stage. Let's hit the tick. We're gonna rename this sketch revolved ring. Our next step is to come up to the symbol that looks like a donut with a bite taken out. This is the revolve tool. The first thing to do is to click the upper portion only of our ring, and then where it turns red and says revolve axis, click on that, and then click on the dotted line we drew for sketch one. You can see that the top portion is rotated around the center point, creating the body of the ring. Let's rename this one too. This ring is quite shapely, but this one's looking a little bit chunky. What we really want to do is add some taper. So on the thin side of the band, it's also thinner, coming down like a V. To achieve this, we're going to do a sketch on the front plane. We'll spin around the camera, and the first thing we're going to do is use the Use or Project tool. It's this one here. You can also press U on the keyboard. We're going to hover over the top of the ring, and when it highlights, we're going to click. This will trace an outline of the ring onto our current sketch. From this point, we're going to draw two lines, down and a V. We're now going to use the equals constraint to get them to be exactly the same, which forces it to be in the middle and symmetrical. If this slipped away, like mine has, we can apply a coincident constraint to move it back out. You can now drag the V up and down to change your amount of taper. To finish this off, we're going to do another extrude. We're going to select our new wedge triangle, change it from blind to symmetric, drag it outwards to make sure it's wider than the ring, and the next thing we're going to do is make it so everywhere where the wedge intersects with the ring, the geometry remains and everything else is deleted. Hit the tick when we're done. You can see we've got that nice slender profile that we were aiming for. The good news is we can come back and edit either of the original sketches to update the ring. Let's do the extruded ring first. I'm going to do some art cutouts at the top. I've drawn one and then I'm going to come up to the mirror tool, hit the center line and then the arc to mirror it over. You can use the trim tool to remove the bits on the outside that I no longer want. When I hit the tick, everything should update. Let's try it for the other one. If we're going to have this cast out of silver, then money is important. What we're going to do is right click and assign a material to each ring. If we open this up and type silver, we'll be able to select it. And then when we hit the tick, it's applied. We'll do the same for the second one. The advantage of this is it will now give us an estimate of the weight. Clicking on the part will bring up this little button in the corner. When we click on that, it will show us the mass, volume and surface area. You might have a target weight to keep your ring affordable. Every time you make a change, you can bring up this box and you compare whether you've made it more expensive or cheaper to manufacture. I'm now going to show you some simple ideas to make your ring more interesting without much effort. The first two are to use fillets and chamfers. Let's start with a fillet. We click on the edges we want and then we input a radius value. We hit the tick to save that and we can see we've made it a lot more curvy and more interesting. Let's undo that and this time apply a chamfer. A chamfer is a 45 degree beveled edge. Let's apply it to this geometry here. Anytime it doesn't give you the preview it means the value is too big. So let's make it much smaller and see how it looks. One thing that works really well is to apply a shell. After we click the shell tool, the next surface that we click will be the one that has the opening to the outside of the part. It seems hard to explain, so it's best just to show you. If I click on this outside surface, it doesn't look like much is happening. That's because our shell thickness is too big. Let's change it to something like one millimeter and see what happens. You can see that it's starting to hollow out the part from that surface. You can even click on more than one surface. I reckon that's a pretty good start with two interesting rings, but not much investment in time. In only a few minutes, we've got some original and unique designs. Don't just stop at what I've showed you here. Experiment with the fillet, chamfer and shell tools as I've shown you to get something truly unique.
In the next part, we're going to look at how to apply patterns to the inside and outside of the ring. Make sure you check it out. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.